Welcome back to Broncos Weekend. Now, I know a lot of fans out there are disappointed they can't tailgate here with us at Empower Field at Mile High in Week 1. But that's not going to stop plenty of you from tailgating at your houses for Monday Night Football. And our own Alexis Perry is down just outside of the Mile High Monument in the parking lot at Empower Field cooking up some tasty treats with Chef Mike from Airmark. Thanks so much, Matt. Here with Chef Michael. He's the executive chef of Airmark here at Empower Field at Mile High. He has a ton of really amazing ingredients because you have a really awesome recipe to share with us. What are we doing today? Uh, we're making buffalo chicken dip. Okay, so what goes into a buffalo chicken dip? What do we have here? I mean, it's kind of your play off of uh, buffalo wings. So you have chicken, you have buffalo sauce, Tabasco. Um, you have uh, kind of a play on ranch, so sour cream, cream cheese, uh, a little bit of green onions and um, some shredded cheese. Okay, so this is great if you're tailgating. This is also great for those who are gearing up for the game at home on Monday night. So let's go ahead and get started. What do we need to do first? So to really start is two things. You need to cook your chicken. Okay. So you're gonna boil, I, I do thighs and breast to give it a little bit more flavor mm -hmm. from the thighs. Um, I know an easier way is just to grab it from, from the rotisserie from the grocery store. That's my way of doing yeah, you it. You know, and that's fine. And tear it all up, make sure there's no bones in it or anything like that. So okay. We, so we do have about, you know, about a pound of chicken. Okay, pound start of chicken. Here. Yep. So we just throw the pan of chicken in, in a the mixing bowl. bowl. Yep. So it's already, so I've already pre-shredded it and have it, have it ready to go. Okay. Yeah. This seems easy. Relatively, yeah. So once you, and even if the chicken's a little warm, that's okay because all these ingredients kind of meld together. Okay. Um, so after step. that is, is sour cream. Okay. So, you know, we just put a, you know, and again, flavor wise, it's kind of depending on what you like, but I, I do about four ounces of sour cream and four ounces of cream cheese. And so I usually do all my dairy first. So it's um, sour cream, cream cheese, and uh, shredded cheese. Um, and then after the shredded cheese, we do all the dry ingredients. So your, your, your kind of your ranch flavor stuff. So you have dill, parsley, garlic, all those great should flavors. Should I just get a ranch mix or should I try to so make that's, my own? So that's a way to go. You can make your own ranch powder or you can buy it from the store. It's, it's got great flavor as it is. Okay. I mean, a lot of people make their own ranch at home. I have a feeling you made your own. Yeah, so we, <laughs> okay. we actually mix it all together. So it's just a nice ranch powder um, that we make in house. We actually serve it on our um, TLC wings. Oh, that are yummy. on concession level. Oh, those are my favorite. Um, so I just put a little bit of greens too. So I like fresh stuff in mine too. So like green onions, right? Okay. And I also like fresh parsley. Yum. Okay. Do that. Yep. Add a little parsley yep. in there. And then and not to leave out the most important ingredient, the buffalo sauce. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, right. So again, be liberal with this. So you can put as much as you want. I um Kind of to taste, right? Yeah, sure. And if you want it spicier, you know, there's definitely different, different types of um, Tabasco and different okay. buffalo sauces that are a little bit hotter. Um, after that, we mix it all up. And kind of just grind it, you know, put it together. Right. Do a nice mix. And then I use a Le Creuset, like a, a nice little heavy bottom pot. You can use a Pyrex, um, something that's uh, that will go in the oven. I've seen these. Yep. And I'm waiting to maybe, I don't know, I need a registry of some kind because yeah. I want the whole set. Yeah. These are amazing. Yeah, I mean, you can go to Le Creuset, you know, and they have they have them all set up and, they're, and they last forever. Okay. So this sounds like something that you can kind of do the night before the yep. game as well. Yeah, so you can actually chill this the night before and then an hour before the game, pop it in the oven at 350. It'll be ready to go. It seems like a really good thing yep. that even the kids can help with at home. Throw that in there. Yep, kind of, you know. It's okay to make a mess because you're going to want to try to try right. it a little bit. I'm like, that is something that I could actually raw because yep. it's already cooked. Everything's cooked in here. Yep. Yeah. You can try it. And actually, it's not a bad cold dip either. Yummy. So that's that's our buffalo chicken dip. So we're going to put the buffalo chicken dip in the oven at 350 for how long? Uh, for 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, 45 minutes to an hour. So then when you pull it out, it's going to be bubbly and beautiful just like this. Yep. What is on top of this? Um, blue cheese and green onions to kind of round out that buffalo wing feel. Yes, it does have a buffalo wing feel. I love that it's orange. I love that it's in this orange little pot. But if I want to serve it to kids, family members, can I put it in something different? Yeah, you just transfer it out of it. Just be careful because it's going to be hot. Okay. Out of the oven. It's going to be hot. Should I do chips? Yeah, I would do tortilla chips or pita chips work, work the best. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Chef Michael. We really appreciate it. This is a great recipe. No problem. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Steve, have you ever had buffalo chicken dip before? Not yet. Oh, but you're about to. Uh, well, yeah, I am soon. You're going to make the recipe. No, I'm not. No, I'm gonna, I'm, sooner than that. Okay. I'm gonna, right. When we get done here, I'm headed down. Okay. With Alexis, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the smart man. Try it out. I like it. I like it. All right. Let's talk keys to victory now. As we wrap this thing up on offense, what do you think is the key to victory for the Denver Broncos? 
I think our biggest key offensively is going to be us making sure that we can run the ball and make sure that we can control the line of scrimmage. And that's, that's going to be difficult because those guys got some guys, Davian Clowney just added to the team last week. Uh, that's going to be one of the biggest things. Von Miller's not going to be with us on the defense to provide his playmaking ability and his, uh, his leadership. So uh, the offense is going to have to have a little bit more pressure, I think, and that run game is going to be a big part of it. For me, it's the rookies. These rookies, Jerry Judy and Lloyd Cushenberry, are going to have to grow up quick and really become contributors. I know Vic Fangio wants to guard against them doing too much, and that's a good guard against, but – they do need to be big contributors here, especially early on if the Broncos want to get into a rhythm. Yeah, and I think that early on, they may be a little bit nervous, but they've played in big games. They, they played in one of the toughest uh, conferences in, in college football. I think by the end of the first quarter, they'll be into it, and it'll be like, like riding a bike. You know a little something about that, S that SEC conference, don't you? Bit, <laughs> All right, let's go to the defensive side of the ball now. Key to victory. Well, I, I think the key to victory on the defensive side of the ball is, is going to be guys – realizing that, hey, Von Miller's not here. We got to step up. We got to play our best ball. And for Malik Reed and also uh, Jeremiah Attitude, don't try to play – don't try to play out of this world. Just play within your, your, yourself. Don't try to do something out of the ex extraordinary, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, also, I think that uh, they may try to focus on – uh, Alexander Johnson and take him out of the game and Josie Jewell I think is really going to have to step up and make some big plays. Let them know that he, he can bring that hammer. For me it's the safeties. Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson talked this week about getting hats to the ball if you're stopping Derrick Henry. If you can do that and force the Titans into passing the last time these two teams played both of those safeties had an interception. Ah, they did. They did. And we, we won the game. How many points did they score? Uh, that's a big goose oh, egg. Man. Hopefully we can do that again. <laughs> hopefully we hopefully we can. That's going to do it for us today on Broncos Weekend. Special thanks to Steve Atwater and Alexis Perry. I'm Matt Boyer. The next time we see you, Broncos country, it'll be game day. <laughs>